When solving equations with fractions, it's important to remember a rule about equations. And that rule is that you can perform any operation. So whether it be plus, minus, divide, times, squaring, raising to the power of 2. You can do that to both sides of the equation and still keep the two sides exactly the same. Okay, so what's important there is that you remember to do the operation to both sides of the equation. So if we just look at this simple equation here, x plus 3 is equal to 5. You can see by inspection that the value of x that's going to make those two sides the same there is 2. 2 plus 3 will give you 5. Now, let's just say, for instance, that I decide that I would like to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. <clears throat> so if I take x plus 3 is equal to 5, and I'm minus 6 from both sides. Is my value of x still equal to 2? Well, let's just check. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And on the right-hand side, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So yes, therefore my value of x is still equal to 2. Had I only minus the 6 from the left-hand side, I would have had negative 1 on the left-hand side and positive 5 on the right-hand side. And then I would not still have the same value for x. So it was kept exactly the same because we minus the 6 from both sides. <clears throat> Let's say, for instance, that I chose now to multiply both sides of the original equation. So if we take x plus 3 is equal to 5. And let's decide to multiply both sides by 2. Is my value of x still 2? Let's check. If I substitute 2 in place of x, 2 plus 3 is 5, multiplied by 2 is 10, and 5 multiplied by 2 on the right-hand side is also 10. So therefore, my x is still equal to 2. So I can use this rule to help me to solve equations with fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCD, the lowest common denominator. And we'll see that what this does is it helps to cancel out our denominators. Okay, and, and in doing so, it makes the fraction easier to solve because it gets rid of the fractions. So let's take a look at some examples. <clears throat> Number one, solve for the variable. Okay, so we can see clearly that this is an equation that contains a fraction. So my first job is to identify what my lowest common denominator is. When my denominators are algebraic, I need to make sure that both denominators are represented as factors in my lowest common denominator. So here we are going to multiply y plus 1 and y plus 4 by our original fraction. So y minus 3 over y plus 1. I'm just putting my numerators and denominators into brackets so that I remember that they were one term <coughs> is equal to y plus 1, y plus 4, and now we're going to multiply it by the right-hand side, which is y plus 2 over y plus 4. Okay, when you multiply two num a fraction by a number, you can simplify any numerator with any denominator. So that y plus 1 will divide with that y plus 1, and we'll be left with y plus 4 times y minus 3, and here, the y plus 4s will divide by each other, and we'll be left with y plus 1 multiplied by y plus 2. I've run out of space there, so I'm just going to go over here. So what we had was y plus 4 multiplied by y minus 3 is equal to y plus 1 <coughs> multiplied by y plus 2. We can now multiply that out. So we'll have y squared plus 1y, because we'll have positive 4 minus 3, minus 12 is equal to y squared plus 3y plus 2. If we now want to get our y's onto one side and our variables onto the other, we will have y squared minus y squared from over here plus y minus 3y is equal to 2 plus 12. <coughs> so that y squared minus y squared is 0. So we have negative 2y is equal to 14. Divide both sides by negative 2 and we get our value for y to be negative 7. So we have successfully solved that equation by getting rid of the denominator by multiplying. So if we just go back here and have a look, we multiplied both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator and then simplified from there. <coughs> Excuse me.
Right, the second equation, our denominators are numeric, so we need to identify our lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator between 2, 6, and 3 will actually just be the lowest multiple, the common multiple between 2, 6, and 3, which is 6. So we are going to multiply the whole of the left-hand side of the equation by 6. Remember to bracket any binomial numerators or denominators so that you remember that they are one term. Um, is equal to 6 multiplied by p over 3. Okay, <clears throat> 6 times a half, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 1 is 3. 6 goes into itself once, so we're just left with negative p minus 3. 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times p is 2p. So that leaves us with 3 minus p plus 3 is equal to 2p. <clears throat> I'm going to put my p's on the right hand side. 2p plus 1p is 3p. 3 plus 3 is 6. So we divide both sides by 3 and we get our value for p to be positive 2. Okay, in your homework book, there is an example, some examples for you to try. So please pause the video and try these examples. Right, number 1, our lowest common denominator is a plus 1 and multiplied by a minus 5. So we need to multiply both sides of our fraction, both sides of our equation. I'm just going to do it up here. a plus 1 a minus 5 times a plus 1, a minus 5. Right, let's simplify. a plus 1 divided by a plus 1 is 1, so we are just left with a minus 2 multiplied by a minus 5. And here, a minus 5 divided by a minus 5 is 1, so we're left with a minus 6 multiplied by a plus 1. <coughs> if we multiply out, a squared minus 7a plus 10 will be equal to a squared minus 5a minus 6. <clears throat> if we then collect our a's on the same side, I'm actually going to put them on the right-hand side. We'll have a squared minus a squared minus 5a plus 7a. And on the left-hand side, we will have 10 plus 6. a squared minus a squared is 0. Negative 5a plus 7a is 2a. 10 plus 6 is 16. Divide both sides by 2 and you get your value for a to be 8. Question 2, your lowest common denominator is 12 because the lowest common multiple between 4, 12 and 3 is 12. So we're going to multiply the whole of the left hand side by 12 and we're going to multiply the whole of the right hand side by 12. Right, 12 times 3q over 4. 4 will go into 12 3 times. 3 times 3q is 9q. Let's just bracket that binomial numerator. 12 goes into 12 once, so we're just left with negative q plus 1. And the brackets are very important there because of that negative. We're going to have to multiply the negative into the bracket. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. So that leaves us with 9q minus q minus 1 is equal to 8. So we have 8q is equal to 9. So therefore divide both sides by 8 and q is equal to 9 eighths.